Wendy Alsup, one of the founding members of the Pelican Project, and I'm here with Christy Anya Wiley and Dr. Karen Pryor, um, who are also both founding members of the Pelican Project. We are gathered around a series of beliefs and commitments, um, particularly on how we um, uh, present ourselves and engage online. And one of those commitments are we commit to honor the dignity and rights of humans of all beliefs, ethnicities, abilities, and races from conception to natural death. Christy, why for you was this an important commitment to get behind and something for us to commit as a group to? Yeah, I think when <clears throat> we first started the Pelican Project, it was um, a few years ago after the Mike Brown incident in Ferguson, right. um, after Trayvon Martin, there's mm -hmm. just been a lot of, I mean, and you know how it's been even these, you know, in recent months even. Um, and there's just been a lot of racial, ethnic unrest. Mm -hmm. Not only in the African-American community, when you think about um, black men and women who have been killed by police and how they've been vilified before um, any kind of, of trial or due process has taken place, um, but also when you look around the world and we think about how um, even at the highest levels of government, uh, people of various ethnicities have uh, been maligned and um, they have, you know, been considered, um, I, I don't even want to say, use the words that have been used to describe people of various ethnicities, but spoken, uh, spoken about in very racist, discriminatory uh, ways, and it's just been harmful. Um, it's been most harmful even within the church, where we have seen people um, in the Christian community um, speak about fellow image bearers um, in ways that are just unbecoming of the gospel and unbecoming of who we are to be as Christian men and women. And so this commitment to honor the inherent dignity and rights of all humans is very dear to me um, because it's something that the church really needs to, 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 first of all, confess our failures in, and then second of all, we need to learn and, and, and do better. That's just it. We need to do better. And so um, we talk about Imago Dei, and we talk about image, um, you know, those being made in the image of God and how we do have inherent worth and dignity, but um, our engagement on social media, the things that we've seen written, uh, what we've heard come out of the mouths of even our most, you know, our, our most well-known and respected theologians and, and pastors and teachers has just been very concerning to me. Mm -hmm. And so to be in this space in the Pelican Project where I am confident that people of various beliefs and ethnicities and abilities are seen, we are heard, we are respected, we are given the dignity and, and, and honor that is deserving of all image bearers. And what I love about the Pelican Project is that, and, and just as a person of color, it's hard to be the one who's always the go-to mm -hmm. for issues on, on race and, and culture and ethnicity. Um, and, and to talk about these issues. But what I love about the Pelican Project is I don't have to convince y'all of anything. <laughs> I don't have to feel like I have to be out front, you know, um, making a statement or offering a correction or offering a point of view that upholds the dignity and, and rights of humans. I see you all doing it every single day. And that's encouraging to me. That's, that's what we mean by an ally, someone who comes along aside us in our hurt, in our pain, in areas where we have been um, spoken of harshly or misrepresented, whatever the case may be, um, and without me having to feel like I need to convince anyone, you all are out there, out front, um, standing in the gap, holding up the arms of our brothers and sisters of color, our brothers and sisters of various um, uh, abilities and, and, and races, 
And so I love that not only do we hold the commitment, but I see it being practiced within the Pelican Project and within um, the clutch. Well, I didn't expect to cry in this video, but that really means a lot. Um, no, it means a lot to us. And I'm, I'm just very thankful that we have this kind of community um, where, where that's the case. So I wanna say thank you uh, to all the Pelican Project family and friends out there, um, and especially you and, and Karen, Wendy. You're welcome. <laughs> Karen, why was this an important part of what you wanted to, to kind of lead us toward with the Pelican Project? Yeah, I love how Christy started kind of with where we are now, you know, in the church and in our culture and racial um, divisions and the, the problems that were, you know, quite frankly, have been there all along. But I think we're really just starting to see as a whole because in large part because of social media, which, you know, I love to curse social media, but, right. um, <laughs> but it has, you know, it has made us all see things I think that we could avoid before. And for me, I mean, I came of age as a young adult Christian in the church um, many years ago um, in the pro-life movement. And so I was very active in the pro-life movement and very trained and taught and, and committed to the sanctity of human life. And we were always taught, you know, from the womb to the tomb. And we were always right. taught about how abortion was an, an, ish, an important issue because abortion takes the life of, of a human being who bears God's image. And so for me, that's true of all human beings. So it wasn't just abortion. It was also euthanasia was another issue and, you know, and infanticide. We always talked about that. And so when these racial issues came to the forefront, and again, I'm not saying that they haven't been there all along. They certainly have been, but I think they've just, we're, we're you know, things have happened where we can mm -hmm. no longer deny it. It just doesn't make any sense to me as someone who was raised right. in, in the pro-life movement to not see this as another kind of pro-life issue that, you know, that when we attack the dignity of a human being, a human person, and we degrade them or, or treat them as second-class citizens, that that is, that is not upholding the sanctity of human life. And so here we find, I find myself, you know, being, coming from the stereotypical conservative white evangelical circles that I come from, just not being able to understand how this, this issue is not just another one in, in the, a whole range of sanctity of human life issues. And so mm -hmm. in the Pelican Project, as Christy said, I feel like this is something, you know, there are things that we have to think about and think through and talk about, certainly, but this is just a no brainer. I mean, this is just, you know, racial issues are part um, you know, of, of, any attempt to uphold the sanctity of human life. And That's so right. um, I, I just, I'm thankful that I have found like-minded Christians who understand that these are all, you know, issues in the same, in the same category. Yeah. If any of this resonates with you as you listen to our commitments, consider checking us out at www.thepelicanproject.com. We'd love for you to join us um, in our discussions.